In the eye of the storm, you remain in control. And in the middle of the war, you guard my soul. You alone are the anchor when my sails are torn. Your love surrounds me in the eye of the storm. When the solid ground is falling out from underneath my feet Between the black skies and my red eyes I can barely see When I realize I've been sold out by my friends and my family I can feel the rain reminding me In the eye of the storm You remain in control In the middle of the war When I was young, my parents made me to go, made me go to church all the time. I went to Sunday school, preaching, Sunday night and Wednesday night. I couldn't uh, fake an illness. My dad would always know I was trying to get out of going to church. It had a big effect on me. I probably wouldn't be here today if it hadn't been for them pushing me into church. Sunday school, we had a real smart lady that taught the class. And sometimes I listened and sometimes I didn't. But I remember we had a pamphlet and on the pamphlet, it had a picture of the lesson, and then you opened it up, and it talked about the story uh, in the scripture. And I do remember the one Jesus on the Sea of Galilee uh, calming the storm. We would do our lesson, and I would take my pamphlet, me and others, and we'd go out, and we had a big balcony overlooked the sanctuary. And I would take that pamphlet and I would fly it out over the sanctuary, make an airplane out of it, and fly it out over the sanctuary. The, uh, the object was to get it to the pulpit. And the preacher would come in for a preaching service and he would pick up our pamphlets. We never did get one quite to the pulpit. My favorite service was Wednesday night. Wednesday night service. Things happened on Wednesday night. I remember one time they gathered for Wednesday night service and the preacher finished his sermon. And back then he would ask for testimonies. People would get up and they would testify about how the Lord uh, help them in their lives. I remember one Wednesday night, we were there, the preacher finished preaching, and there was a man came in and he sat down in the back. And when the preacher asked for testimonies, he was the first one that stood up, a big man. And he said this, he said, years ago, I came into this church, he said, I was down on my luck. I was struggling with everything. I didn't have a job. I didn't have any money. I didn't have any food. I didn't have any place to live. And he said, this church took a collection that night. And he said, I reached in my pocket and I had one $20 bill. He said, I put that $20 bill in the collection plate. He said, it was all I had. Then he said, after that, my life changed. He said, I got a job. I became very prosperous. I made a lot of money, more money than I ever thought I'd ever have. And he said, it all happened years ago in this church. 
<laughs> My mom was sitting there and she got up and she said, I dare you to do it again. And of course, he just sat down and he turned red all over because I was watching. He was afraid to do that. Afraid that he would lose everything that he had. He didn't have a lot of faith <laughs> to do that. Fear. We're afraid of a lot of things. I'm afraid of a lot of things. And sometimes fear and being afraid controls our life. I have two sons. Both of them's very talented. My oldest son is extremely talented. He has been his whole his whole life. I remember when he was just very, very young. My dad taught him when he was three or four years old how to whittle with a knife. If you if you know what whittling is, you take a piece of wood and you whittle something out. He, he, he was using a knife at three or four years old, and he could whittle with a knife. My dad taught him safety. And you know, not long after that, guess what? He was, he was shooting a gun at a very young age, and he learned about guns. My dad taught, taught him about guns, and he was very safe. He would go out, he would go to Krupperneck to my grandmother's house when he was just a young kid, and he would be out all day just walking in the woods, just doing, he, he loved the woods. He was good, he was good at basketball, he was good at baseball, he was good at football, he was good at archery, he was good with uh, guns. He was just very talented. He picked up on things very easily. When he was 17 years old, he was just graduating from high school, he, he came to me and he said, I want to join the Marines. He was only 17 years old, but he wanted to join the Marines. I had to sign a waiver so that he could join the Marines. He went to Camp Lejeune and went through basic training. And guess what? He shipped off to Iraq. That's when... The war was waging between the United States and Iraq. And he was a Marine, and guess what? Marines are on the front line. He was deployed to a place called Fallujah, and they were going all throughout Fallujah, hand-to-hand -hand combat. And during that time, I was a basket case. I was at Greenview United Methodist Church, and I, I was numb with fear. I was so afraid. What was I afraid of? I was afraid he wouldn't make it back. I would get into the house and I would watch. Oh, I would watch. And if somebody would slow down and stop, I would be so afraid that they were coming to the door and knock on the door and say that something had happened. If you remember, some of you will remember during that time, you could watch the war on TV. They had people embedded with different units and they followed them around and they actually showed the war. And guess what? I watched the war 24 seven every day. And I would go to sleep at night with the TV on. The TV never went off and it never changed channels. It was always on that war. One night I fell asleep. I fell asleep watching the war. And later on that night, my dog, Snoopy, came and licked me on the nose. That was odd. Never done that before. He came and he licked me right on the nose. And I woke up and I looked at my watch and it was 2.30 a.m. And just as soon as my just as soon as I looked at my watch, guess what happened? The phone rang. 2:30 a.m. and the phone rang. Huh. 
It rang once and I picked it up before it could ring, ring a second time. And I just knew I was scared to death. I was numb. You can imagine. And I put the phone to my ear. And it was my son. He was on an aircraft carrier in the Strait of Vermouth. He was talking with a satellite phone. He said, I'm on my way home. Fear. Each and every one of us had experienced fear. Each and every one of us goes through storms of life. Think about now. How do we deal with this fear? Jesus was wanting to go across the Sea of Galilee. Now he could walk all the way around it, but that would take forever. Or he could get a boat and go across it. They were fishermen, his disciples, and maybe one of them had a boat or maybe he borrowed a boat, but they got into the boat and they started across the Sea of Galilee and a storm begins to rage. And Jesus is asleep. He's asleep in the boat. And they wake him. They wake him and they say this, Lord, do you not care if we die? And Jesus stands up and he calms the storm. And he says, where is your faith? Where is your faith? They were afraid that they were going to die. There it is. There it is. There is the fear. I've heard preachers and other people stand up and say, I'm not afraid to die. And I've thought, how much have they thought about that? That is a fear I think that we all experience. Fear of death. They came to Jesus and they said, Lord, if one would come back from death and tell us what it's like, we would feel differently about it. And Jesus says, even though one would come back from death, people would not believe. Fear. Jesus said, in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go, I will come again and receive you into myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. He gives us that promise that if we believe and trust in him, that he will be there. When we close our eyes to that fear we all have. You see, you don't get faith all at once. You have to work on it and work your way up to it. So many times Jesus says, fear not, for I am with you. And I have faith that he'll be with us from now until we cross over into that thing we call death. And dreams are far from me And I'm running out of faith I see the future I picture Slowly fade away And when the tears of pain And heartache Are pouring down my face I find my peace In Jesus' name In the eye of the storm You remain in 
In the eye of the storm, you remain in control. 